Weekends are great. You've been at work or at school for five days and finally you get the chance to do whatever it is you want to do. Sometimes that's absolutely nothing to relax, which is fine. That's nice. But let's face it, after a while, relaxing is boring. Have you ever thought about doing something else at the weekend? Something that's a little bit different. Something that gives you the chance to compete at any level whether you're 8 or 58 years of age. Something that will get the adrenaline pumping like nothing else. Have you ever thought about going kart racing? Of course, there are plenty of other sports out there, but when it comes to combining skill and adrenaline, there's nothing quite like this. Perhaps more than any other sport, it really gives you the ability to test your mental strength, your ability to concentrate, to deal with pressure, make split second decisions, and of course, to work as part of a team. When you zip up that race suit and put on that race helmet, it gives you a chance to become somebody else, it gives you a chance to become a hero. It's an amazing feeling when you put in a perfect lap time, right on the brink of control, or you pull off a really good overtaking move, or you win a race in front of all your friends and family. There's nothing like it at all, and it will keep you coming back wanting more and more. A typical race day starts with the driver's briefing. The clerk of the course is in charge of the event and runs through any special instructions with the drivers and answers any questions they might have. The carts are then taken from the working area in the paddock to the grid, ready for the race. Before they're released onto the circuit, carts form upon the dummy grid. After a formation lap, the race then starts when the lights go green. Typically, each driver will get two or three qualifying heats. The aim here is to try and make up as many places as possible, because the results of the heats are added up to set the grid for the main race of the day, the final. Finals are usually longer races and are the most important part of the day, because it's the results of this race that will determine which drivers will be awarded trophies. The end of each race is signified by a chequered flag. The drivers then slow down before heading into Park Fermi. After a quick check of the result sheets, the prize giving takes place with trophies presented to the top finishers. It's a good chance for the family to take a quick snap and at the bigger meetings, photographers and television crews will also be present. British rally champion David Higgins explains just why he goes kart racing in his time off. I've always enjoyed karting, and I'm, but the main beauty is it really keeps your reflexes up. Um, rallying now has changed an awful lot in the last 10 years and it's all about keeping the car um, as smooth as you possibly can opposed to sliding them around and, and there's no better training ground for any type of motorsport than karting whether it's um, saloon car racing, Formula 1 or, or even rallying. This is um, 125 ICC which, is, which again is very very good because you have the um, six-speed sequential gearbox, 125cc engine and the gear change mechanism on these is very similar to the rally cars and um, the driving technique, although it, you'd think it'd be a million miles away, it's very very similar, although I do have to keep working a bit harder and being even smoother on these than um, you do in a rally car, but I'm used to sliding a car at um, quite big angles because you never actually know what's around the corner, where when you get to the racetrack it's all about trying to keep it smooth, but this is, is absolutely perfect for, for modern rallying. Kart racing was started in the 1950s by Americans and soon spread to European countries. So in 2006, karting is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Thousands of people came to watch and top drivers like Sterling Moss race karts too. Nowadays, historic and classic karts are restored and brought out for demonstrations. By the end of the 60s, they looked very much like the modern karts with the engine on the right of the seat. It just didn't have any bodywork in those early days. Nowadays, bodywork adds to the safety of the carts and the tyres give much more grip. And of course, the engines today are much more powerful. Kart traders bring lots of spare parts to race meetings. Many of them are members of the BKIA, the British Kart Industry Association, and are there to provide advice and support during race meetings. There are also plenty of shops and mail order places where you can buy carts, tyres, racewear and spare parts. Karting Magazine, for instance, has lots of adverts for new and used carts, as do some websites. Karting is very much a family sport. Boys and girls, dads and moms race, 
and the rest of the family are there to support them. And it's easier than you might think to get started with specialist professional kart schools for beginners that supply everything you need to try out the sport. To find out more, track down your local kart club on the internet and find out when they're next racing. Then go along and ask for advice from those already involved in the sport. Now let's take a closer look at a race kart with British Open champion Ashley Jones. The carts are very simple. Uh, you've got a throttle, brake, steering wheel, uh, a 60cc engine which is rear wheel drive and is um, propelled by a chain which has a sprocket on. It's very easy to start, you just, you just pull the lever here and uh, just turn it off there and that's about it really. Youngsters start in the cadet classes from the age of 8 up to 11 or 12. They can then move into the junior classes. Junior TKM, Minimax and Junior Rotax are the most popular two-stroke classes, but there are four-stroke classes too. All of these have versions for senior drivers aged 16 and above. We're looking now at some onboard shots from a Junior Max cart, now one of the most popular classes for the under 16s. But there are also a number of international classes, Jika, ICA and Formula A, where drivers can compete both in Britain and in Europe on the same equipment. The direct drive classes, that is for the carts without gears, have rolling starts after a slow formation lap, whilst the gearbox carts usually have a standing start. Either way it's great fun and every Formula 1 driver on the grid today started their career in karting. Indeed seven times Formula 1 world champion Michael Schumacher still races karts on a regular basis. Jensen Button is a former British cadet karting champion as is Indy 500 champion Dan Weldon. And Formula 1 world champion Fernando Alonso was also a top international kart racer. Here he is in cart number 14 in action. Let's hear from another former kart racer, 1992 world champion Nigel Mansell. Hi, I'm Nigel Mansell uh, from Risington here. It's the Midland Championships where in fact as a young lad I raced many, many times. My son Greg is karting now and it's the grassroots of all motorsport. Great entry level and uh, a lot of fun for the whole family. And really, uh, it's a fabulous sport, and I hope anybody coming into it enjoys it as much as I have and had maybe uh, as much success. Motorbike and single-seater world champion John Surtees has discovered karting more recently, as we now hear. Motorsport has so much to offer. It has, well, after all, I've spent my whole life in motorsport in one way or another, two wheels, four wheels, such, and karting with my son. But it opens up a whole new horizon for youngsters to come along and perhaps get involved in the motorsport industry. When I started four years ago with my son, uh, I hadn't quite realised uh, what it could contribute. Uh, okay, it contributes a little pain to the parents and uh, everybody associated, but for the youngster, it is a wonderful experience. It's something which prepares them for life. And I think that apart from a motorsport activity in the future, it also requires people to come along and be part of the infrastructure, the marshals, the officials and everybody else. One or two things have cropped up from yesterday, one or two things I've noticed which we need to um, think about. As well as drivers, kart clubs need lots of volunteers to help run meetings. Here the trap marshals are having their morning briefing. Don't worry if you've got no experience because all marshals receive on-the-job training and can benefit from specialist courses. People are needed to check drivers into the race meetings and to give out the race results. Marshals are needed to look after the grid to start the race and show flag signals to the drivers, for instance that someone has spun round in front of them. Of course, safety is paramount. Ambulances and paramedics are always at hand. 
Most clubs use computers for lap scoring, but a manual backup also takes place, and volunteers are needed to carry out all of these duties. And after the race, the driver's carts are weighed and checked by the scrutineers to make sure they all comply with the regulations. And finally, even the prize giving needs organisers to hand out the trophies to those lucky winners. So now that you've seen this video, we hope that you'll become part of karting, whether it's as a driver, a mechanic, a marshal, or even just as a spectator. One thing's for sure, when you come along to a kart race, you'll absolutely love it, and you'll keep coming back and back for more.